Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. It's January, which is a time when lots of people begin their running journey. Maybe you entered the London Marathon as a joke a few months ago, got in and now you're feeling that need to actually start doing some running. Maybe you got back into running after a long break, or maybe you're completely new, want to go on this amazing running journey and try out a new sport. Either way, this video is for you to help you out on your new running journey and make it stick. Even the best runners in the world work beginners ones and everybody has to start somewhere. Really excited for you to be joining us on this journey. And yeah, if you're new around here, a bit about me. Well, I started running when I was about 18. I had no idea what I was doing. I wish we had YouTube back then. Fast forward 20 years and I've run a 225 marathon and nearly 100 marathons now making my living here on YouTube, helping people with those videos and running content. One of the best things about running is that you really don't need any super duper fancy kit to get going. However, there will be a few things that you do need to get started on your journey. Firstly, get yourself some good running shoes. Now, yes, you can run in fashion trainers like your Converse's, but it's unlikely they're going to be comfortable or supportive enough. Proper running shoes will provide you with some really good support and cushioning and make running a lot more comfortable. So ideally, head to your local sports shop or running specialty shop, we'll link to our favorite ones down below and try on what feels the most comfortable. Or if you want to buy some shoes online, then we've got three good recommendations at three different price points. Something like the Reebok Float Rides will set you around 50 to 60 pounds. The Nike Pegasus at 38 or 39 will be about 80 to 100, depending on what deals are available. Or the New Balance 1080 is around about 120 to 130 pounds. The main difference here is the higher price ones will likely last a little bit longer, be a little bit more supportive, but all three are really good options for new and experienced runners alike. Next up, you're gonna to want to wear some technical clothing. Now, it doesn't have to be exactly running specific, but any gym or sports clothes that will wick away the sweat will be fine. I personally avoid wearing anything cotton-based as this will get wet, stay wet, and become heavy and could chafe as well. Some good places to start, shops like Decathlon, Wiggle have got a good own brand range or why not check out my website benparts.com we've got some really great technical clothing to get you started and as always subscribers feel free to use code YouTube for 10% off your order and then lastly these things aren't essential but will certainly make your running a lot more comfortable a cap is really good to keep the sun and rain out of your face and the sweat as well from coming down and if you've got some slightly longer hair as I do under here it keeps it all in place Again, the best running hats on benparks.com. Some other things to keep you warmer in the winter, such as a buff around your neck, some gloves, and a windproof or waterproof jacket. Not essential in those early days, but they'll be really good in the long term. And there's somewhere where you can hold your phone. Now, I'd really recommend taking your phone with you on every single run, not just for listening to music and podcasts, but for safety reasons as well. If something goes wrong, you're gonna to want to be able to get in touch with some others. Now, this can be just whacking it in with your pocket and your leg so your shorts or an armband. I carry mine in something called a naked band which goes around my waist. Or some people like this free train option where you can keep it on your chest. We'll add some links below to help you out. And finally, investing in some running socks. This might be the most important thing on this list. Good socks will help prevent blisters, which really are the runners at worst nightmare. So good brands to look at, things like Stance and Gingy, or just simply head to Amazon, search for running socks and read some of the best reviews. Right, that's all the chat about the kit to get you going. Now let's chat about the training plans. So you're ready to step out the door on your first run, but how do you know how long to run for, how fast to run for? The big problem is a lot of runners, and especially new runners, when they head out in those first few days, they simply run until they can't run anymore. They're sore for days afterwards, and they don't run again for ages. It's a lot harder than they expected. They hurt more, and they get very disillusioned about what's going on. This is really common, and it's really what we're trying to avoid. But really, this is where a really good quality training plan can be very beneficial. Official. Getting yourself a training plan specifically designed for beginners, beginners <laughs> will help schedule your running throughout the week and make sure you avoid overdoing it and you're just loading your body in the best way possible. Getting that really important recovery time in there. Something like a couch to 5k plan is perfect to ease you in gradually and it starts out with a really good run walk structure. For example, run minute, one minute running, one minute walking and then repeating. No one's expecting you to go and run for 20 minutes non-stop stop on your first run. Now, of course, we sell plenty of training plans on the website. All our beginner plans at every distance 
are completely free, so head to benparks.com to check those out. The other thing to mention here is it's really good to introduce some very basic strength work in those first few weeks and months and get into a good routine. For a lot of people, having that strength routine helps support their running. It doesn't have to be much, just about 20 minutes once a week with some basic body weight exercises, something like squats, lunges, planks, bridges and calf raises will be great. Go look after those calf muscles in running. Quickly guys, I'd love to know what is your big goal with your running this year? I've just got back in from a run, super excited for everything we've got coming up on the channel with my running this year. And yeah, let us know, what are your big goals? Are you a newer runner out there? You've got some really ambitious things that you're heading and working towards. Yeah, let us know down in the comments and smash that like button. It would really help out with the video as well. Right. Back to the video. Something that can really help with our motivation and just enjoyment of running is being able to track our runs and seeing an improvement over time. Now downloading an app to your phone, something such as Strava or Map My Run, is a great way to track your running. You can see how far you've run, how long it's taken, the route you took, and it's also a great tool to look back on over time and see how far you've come down the line. Now if you're a brand new runner, it's unlikely you're gonna have a specific dedicated running watch on your wrist yet, but you may have another fitness tracker such as an Apple Watch or a Fitbit, which are also great tools. So just check in the settings, see if you've got that GPS functionality and a few basics there to be able to track your pace, distance and time, because that's all you're gonna need in those early stages to get going. Maybe upgrade to a fancy running watch or something like that in the future. Next we're going to talk about how to actually run with proper good running form and technique. The main thing here in this early stages is to make sure you're landing with your foot underneath your body, underneath your center of mass, rather than striding out in front of you. That's what we're trying to avoid. That's sort of like putting the brakes on. Landing underneath that center of mass will promote a really efficient stride. But in these early stages, don't try and overthink it too much. When we're starting out, there's so much to think about as we run. The most important thing is just to go and run and get that feeling for it. It might not be that pretty to start with in those early days, but the more you do it, the more your body will adapt and the more efficient you will become anyway. Finally, probably the most important point of them all is learning how to run slow. Now, I know what you're thinking. I don't want to run slow. I want to run fast and as fast as I possibly can. And that's fine, of course, but the key to making improvements in your running and be able to run is consistent. And in order to do that, you need to learn to be able to run slow. Lots of beginner runners do make this mistake by going and doing all their runs too fast and end up completely overloading their bodies and ultimately become injured, fatigued, and lose that motivation. No one wants to do that. So how slow are we talking? Well, ideally, you want to be able to hold a conversation while you're running. Now, of course, there's time and a place for faster running down the line, but in these early stages, it's important to build this foundation that you can then build on in the months, weeks and months ahead. While you are just starting out, try and run as slowly as you comfortably can and you will find you'll be able to run a lot longer and generally find it's a lot more enjoyable. So there we have it guys, a few things to help you out on your running journey this year. Remember, subscribe for more running tips. Enjoy yourself out there. That is the most important thing. We want to be enjoying our running as much as possible and we'll see you very soon for loads more tips, tricks, reviews and yeah, lots of exciting stuff coming up this year. Happy New Year everybody, happy 2023 and keep on getting it done and we'll see you in the next one.